Hey guys, what's going on? Jason with JW Classic VW, and we are back to the vlog, guys. We're gonna be talking about some of the bad brake stuff again this week. A little bit of a review of what I ran into, some of the things, mistakes I made, and uh, some of the things you need to look out for, guys. So with all this uh, crazy stuff going on with this coronavirus and how it's impacting everybody, I wanted to go ahead and do this, this video outside, outside in the public. <laughs> So I can talk to you guys about some things. So uh, we got somebody driving right behind me. <laughs> Part of being out in the public. <laughs> so first off, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying healthy out there and that you're taking care of your family and for the most part, staying at home, right? If you wanna go for a cruise, go for a drive or you know, just for a jog, do something to work out. I understand that, I'm doing that too, man. But maintain social distancing, stay away from people. And make sure that they stay away from you. <laughs> that might have that might mean you're gonna have to be like, hey buddy, maintain that six feet at least, right? <laughs> so what kind of stuff did I run into with the bad brakes? And what kind of stuff am I talking about? And what did I do? So what happened is <laughs> that's how the good stories always start, right? What happened is, or or there I was. <laughs> so there I was. I had finished installed by bad brakes, and I decided that I'm gonna go ape shit crazy and go for a drive and get all into my brakes. And I did. I did that and what ended up happening is I glazed over my rotors and some of the things that you guys tell me about that happened to you with all the squeaking and the whining, yes, that happened to me too. <laughs> my fault completely though because I didn't know about bedding brakes. What's bedding brakes? I'm sure you guys are like, what the heck are bedding brakes? Well, let me tell you what bedding brakes is all about. So what is bedding brakes and what is the whole process of bedding brakes? Well, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. And what you need to know is you need to bed your brakes based off your manufacturer's recommendations. And after I glazed over my brakes and I jacked them up, I gave Pete a call at, uh, at Aircooled. And he said, well, did you, did you bed your brakes? And I was like, did I, did I what? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about, Pete? And he sent me a link to a PDF that I'm going to put down in the description below too, guys, so you can kind of see the process. I'm going to describe it here, but I'm sure I'm going to mess something up along the way. But the whole thing is, is you're meeting the surface between your pads and your rotor. And I'm not talking like seating your brakes, because what that means is when you seat your brakes or seat your shoes, is you're making sure that the pad doesn't separate the brake pad doesn't separate from the back side of the actual the the glue there between the pad and the actual metal that it's adhered to that you don't separate those two surfaces what we're doing here is we're actually melting in or joining together the the mating surfaces of the rotor and the pad itself and that is a process that is a big process what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys back to the garage and we're gonna talk about what I had to go through and what I had to do to resurface my rotors so that I could go and re-bed my brakes. All right, so let's head back to the garage and we will talk about it there, guys. So I can give you some visuals. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna leave the fan on because it's a little warm in here, but uh, there's a couple things, like I was telling you guys, that I ran into that I wanted to share with you guys, especially if you're thinking about getting one of these disc brake kits. First thing is, you wanna get the right lug nuts. <laughs> I ended up using these lug nuts that I picked up from one of the auto parts stores, and I had to modify them to get them to work. I have the right lug nuts now, you guys saw that if you're a part of my Facebook group, and I'll put those on here in a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. Okay, 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 so now you can see my my rotor and my caliber assembly and it's uh it's still kind of working its way together from the bedding process and i'm gonna take you guys over to the bench here in a little bit and talk about that but first off i want to kind of give you the visual of what i had to do and you'll notice that i have <laughs> the air cooled caps on here now because i tried using the so what i ended up having to do is i'm glad that this hub is removable right here so I took the hub off. Oh, it's from the threads. I took the hub off and it gave me the access to the rotor on the back and the front side. Well, more on the front side to do what I had to do. I also took the pads out and I beveled the pads. I put a 45 on each surface that meets the rotor. So you guys want to see what that looks like when I'm talking about with that? Yeah, hold on a second. Let me take, let me take you guys over to the bench so I can show you that stuff. But I was able to remove the hub and then I was able to 
resurface the rotors because I had to do that because of the way that I had glazed over the rotors. And yeah, that was my mistake. That was my bad. So let's go over to the bench and I can show you guys a little bit more what's going on. So one of the things I told you I had to do was I took the one well, half to do it, but it's one of the things that I, I saw that was recommended for the uh, to help out with any kind of noise that you're getting is to go ahead and bevel the pads. And you can see that I beveled the pads on both sides here. So did that help out with the noise? I'm not sure if it did or not because I did a few other things too at the same time. I also put some anti-seize on the back of the pad and that may have helped too. So, yep. All right, guys. Whew, man. Let's get a little warm down here. Turn off that fan. So what did I have to do to get the brake discs and the pads ready so I could re-bed those things? Because I can tell you the bedding process, but the thing is, is there's probably a lot of you guys out there that have got your brakes to where they're squealing, right? But they're whining and you're tired of them. Maybe, maybe you got so sick of them that you've taken them off your car. And I'm hoping that some of these little tips that I give you help out with you getting rid of that sound. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I went through deglazing those rotors twice because the first time I was like, ah, it's, I'll take some 100 grit sandpaper and I'll, you know, I'll be able to knock it off and I just tried doing it by hand. No, man, that was not enough. That was definitely not enough to knock the, the glaze off of those rotors. So what I ended up having to do the second time, mind you, is I got out my freaking grinder here and I've got this, uh, what is this thing? It's a 80 grit four and a half inch blade or it was four and a half inches at one time. And I went around and I'm, hey, you like that sound effect? Pretty good, right? And uh, <laughs> I went around the whole rotor on both sides and knocked off that glaze until I got it back down to just metal. And that wasn't it. Once I got that there, I went ahead and took my palm sander with a uh, hundred grit sandpaper and actually was a hundred grit. Let me see what size is this. Hold on a second. I want to tell you guys wrong. Yeah, hundred grit, hundred grit sandpaper. And then I went around the front and the back side of the rotor again with my palm sander until I got a nice rough finish. You know, you need a nice rough finish to help reseat those brakes, those uh, those pads onto that rotor. So, and that wasn't it. I had one more step. <laughs> I went around and I went in a circle motion with that 100 grit sandpaper and provided some kind of like hashing or hash, you know, uh, cross hashing to the rotor. And then I went through the bedding process. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. Here's the bedding process, guys. Once again, I'm gonna link this down in the description below so if you guys want to go check out the bedding process you could do it yourself as well and on page six of this is where it starts and it's no joke first off you need to find a place where you can do this and i found the best place i found right now because all schools are closed down is my kids high school so i went over to my kids high school and i started this whole bedding process over again because i tried doing it the first time and it didn't work so here's we go you start off with a series of gentle braking. You're, what, the whole point of this is you're warming up your rotor gradually through through cycling it. You know, you, you get it warm, you let it cool off a little bit, you let it warm back up again, you cool it off again, and you do 8 to 10 light stops from 30 down to 15 miles per hour. Now, I'm going to tell you, people probably thought I was crazy doing this, and, and it goes on. So you do this first from 30 miles an hour down to 15 miles per hour, eight to 10 times with 30 seconds, well, 20 to 30 seconds pause in between each time you do it. So I had my phone in my car. I wasn't gonna film this, you know, this bedding process with you guys, but holy smokes, it was, I just wanted to focus on the bedding process while I was doing it. So I'm driving around and I got my timer and I, and I do that eight to 10 times 30 down to 15 miles per hour. The next step is you gotta go do the same thing all over again, 45 down to 30 miles per hour. And you, with, with the pause in between each time that you do it, eight to 10 times with a 20 to 30 second pause in between. So you're cycling it, you're heating up the rotor, it's cooling down, you gotta do this guys, because if you don't do it, you don't do it all the way through, it's not gonna bed properly. And this is for these brakes, these Willwood brakes and the rotors from uh, Pete at Aircooled. Now, 
It may be different for your rotors. You need to check out the manufacturer specifications on what you need to do. But moving on. So the next step is, is like hard stops. You're moving quite a bit quicker uh, between 55, 65 miles per hour, and you're doing like a hard stop or more, more aggressive stop down to 25 miles per hour. Let me tell you, this one's really tough. Actually, uh, I found the road beside my kid's school where I could actually get up to speed to do this. And I was able to achieve eight to 10 times of doing harder stops from 55 to 65 miles per hour down to 25. So after all that, you got a driver home. You don't want to stop at stoplights and, and hold the pedal down. So what I was doing is I was gradually slowing down to stop signs or stoplights and then using my e-brake to stop. And thank God there's not a lot of traffic right now because this can be dangerous. So you want to make sure that you're being safe with what you're doing. But the point is you're trying to get back home so you can let the car sit and completely cool down with ambient air. So you don't want to stick a fan on it. You just want it to sit there and cool down completely. And then you come out the next day and my brakes are freaking great now. I got no squeaking. Um, will it stay that way? I don't know. I'll have to give you guys an update later on to see if, if the, the mating stays that way. But I drive pretty aggressively. So there's a good chance I might have to do this again. But my brakes are great. They're way stronger. My pedal, some of you guys out there have, have asked if my pedal was any different. Heck yeah, man. My pedal is way stronger than it was before. And this is also some procedures that you guys need to follow when it comes to setting up your, your brakes so that you don't need a proportioning valve. I don't need a proportioning valve. My brakes are applying correctly because I follow the directions in this thing. You, on your rear drums, you wanna get those things to where the drums are almost tight. Well, pretty tight, not pretty tight, but you know, dragging pretty good on the pads so that uh, when you start driving around, they loosen up to where they should be. And I, that's good information, man. And I tried bleeding these brakes uh, a couple different ways. Somebody's driving up. But the best way that I found to bleed the brakes was getting my kid in there and the this old school man, old school pump pump and pump it up a lot and then just hold it down and just keep bleeding out the brakes. And I went around probably three or four times before I got all the air out of the system. Now initially, some of you guys asked about this too, I, I kind of a little trick to help get the, the fluid out of there. And uh, initially what I did is I just had a line on my calibers on the front and on my uh, my wheel cylinders in the back and I just cracked the line open and I would just pump fluid through all the way through the line and that just seemed to help out quite a bit when it came to doing the initial bleeding on my brakes. I have a vacuum bleeder too but I've never had a lot of luck with those vacuum bleeders. I've always found the best way is just to have somebody sitting in the car pump up the brake hold it down and then bleed bleed out the air man. It's the best way. So if you've got any questions, guys, hit me up in the comments below. Uh, the bedding process is super imperative. If you guys have got squeaky brakes and you didn't bed your brakes the right way, find out what you need to do to bed your brakes because I guarantee you, you're gonna have to go back there and deglaze those brake rotors and get that shine off of there, all the way off of it, and then go back and bed your brakes. And I bet you, you'll get rid of that squeak. Let's talk about what's coming up soon, guys. So let's uh, move over here to the, uh, I bought some stuff. I ordered some stuff. Let's talk about some of the stuff that I got. Hey guys, I'm right in the middle of editing this video, and guess what time it is? It's time to do the drawing. The drawing for the sticker pack, and something else pretty special. And we got a guest, a guest to help us with the drawing. Pretty cool. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, especially if you're enjoying this video. All right guys, let's get to that drawing. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jason with JW Classic VW, and we're about to do that drawing for the sticker pack. What sticker pack? Hold on a second. Man, I just had it. I always do this. Where the freaking sticker pack goes? Here it is. All right. This sticker pack, those of you guys that watched the uh, video where we did the bad brake system install, I told you that we'd be giving away or doing a drawing for all these cool stickers. Let me show you real quick. Some really cool CB Performance stickers in here. Plus, I also had a sticker that I got from, uh, from Pete over at air cooled so yeah i'm gonna throw that one in there too very cool all right so if you guys are 
a member of my Facebook group, the Facebook group for JW Classic VW, you've already seen that we've kind of put these together. And if you're not a member of the Facebook group already, go ahead and check out the Facebook group in the description below. Right here, we've got all the different names of the people that commented on the video. And I'm gonna go ahead and have somebody help me out with this little bit of drawing. My kiddo, Kung Fu Gamer. Hello. Kellen, what's going on, Kung Fu Gamer? Good. He's got his own YouTube channel, guys, where he does some gaming stuff. So if you've got kids or if you're into gaming, go ahead and check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description below as well. So here we go. So we mix it. Oh, you're dropping one already. So we mix it up some. Oh yeah, by the way, along with the sticker cap, or the sticker, the stickers, is coming this cap, this baseball cap from CB Performance. I'm gonna throw that in there as well, guys. Pretty okay? cool. You ready? Ready to do this drawing? Yeah, sure, why not? All right, here we go. Like it's, let's, you know. All right, let's see. Mix it up real good, mix it up real good. There you go. Okay, now go ahead and pull one out of there. Let's see, who's the big winner? AC. AC. That's, that was what's in your comment thing, man. AC. So I don't really know your name, but do me a favor, hit me up on my email or join the Facebook group, both in the description below, and let me know what your address is, and you have won the sticker pack, bro. Yeah, AC. Over here, guys. Over here, I'm gonna show you who it is. <laughs> All right, got anything to say, Kung Fu Gamer? Well, that's congratulations for winning that, and uh, have fun with it. All right, good stuff, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the cool parts that I just got in now, but uh, thanks to my kiddo for joining in, and go ahead and check out his channel, guys. See you in a little bit. So the first cool thing I got is I kept going back and forth on whether or not I wanted to go ahead and buy my own reamer for my, to, to, to do my link pins on the front of my car, and I went ahead and I got one of these from CarCraft, and it was about 140 bucks. I think it was like 160 with shipping, and, yeah, man. You only need to buy this thing one time, so that's awesome. And let's take it out real quick. There's a couple different ones out there that you can get, but you want to get one like this. The long reamer. And why do you why do you want the long one? Let me bring you over closer to the to the uh, the bench here, guys. So why do you want this reamer? Well, you want the longer reamer because it gets all the way through both of the bushings the way that you need to, to be able to have your kingpin go through all the way without any kind of friction. Now you're gonna have a little bit of friction when you put it in there, but it shouldn't be that much. And the reason why I got this is because on my driver's side, if you guys have watched my suspension video, you know that on my, not driver's side, I'm sorry, passenger side, that uh, I had some play in there. That kunk, 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 kunk play. Well, it's still there. So it's not as bad, but I need to go ahead and take it apart again and make another shim that's right size for, oh, what's that? Gotcha. Ha! <laughs> uh, take apart the shim and make a new shim to go in there the right way. What else we got here? Well, when I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and install caster shims on the front of my beam. We're gonna go ahead and check out and see where my beam currently sits on the caster, and we're also gonna see how much this corrects the caster. Now this is something that you wanna do if you have a lowered beetle. It's not something you really probably have to worry about so much if you have a stock height beetle. So here are the new lug nuts, and you wanna make sure that you get the right kind. These are ball seat lug nuts, and you see like on stock smoothies, you wanna make sure that you get ball seat. Yeah, because if you don't, they're gonna be jack jacking up your rims, man. What else did we get? What else did we get? Let's see. Well, I got a spare clutch cable because that should always be part of your spare kit. And I also got a spare throttle cable. And I had a couple of my clips on my wheels brake, so I'm gonna be installing new clips for my hubcaps. And that's what I got in here. Some clips. And they come with rivets too. And what is this right here? This is the horn brush little kit that I need to make my horn work the right way. Right now I got this stupid uh, temporary button that's been in there more than it should be for temporary. All these little fun things that I get to do now that we uh, are on our little quarantine, right? But I've been meaning to do this for a while, so we're gonna go ahead and fix the horn the right way. 
Oh, yeah. And what's this? We're gonna be doing a video very soon on adjusting side play on the rocker arm assembly. Uh, last time I checked my valve lash, I was off a little bit when it came to the play. So what it does when you adjust your side play correctly is it reduces wear on your valve guides. And well, you know, your rockers themselves and your valve tips. So we're gonna do that too. <laughs> okay guys, okay guys, that is it for today. Uh, a short video on some of the stuff that I ran into with the bad brakes and it's my fault. <laughs> I got a little eager beaverish with those uh, brakes, you know. It happens, we, we, we make mistakes. So, hey guys, if you like what you watched here, if you enjoy the content, hit that subscribe if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to comment below, man. I love comments, I love helping you guys out. It's uh, whatever questions you have, man, from carburetors to, to, to I don't know, one of the million other things that I've done on this car. <laughs> oh yeah, and congratulations to AC. Don't forget to hit me up with an email, buddy, uh, or in the Facebook group, hit me up with an IM on your address so I can send you that sticker pack and that cool CB Performance cap. All right, guys, that's it. That's it for today. This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and I will see you guys on the next one.